Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank God this morning for this beautiful Sunday. Another day in Him. Another day in His grace and His mercy. And if you put your trust in Jesus, everything will be all right. Amen. And I've tried Him. And he's never failed. Have you tried my Jesus? Amen. And this morning... I want to give honor to God, who's the head of my life. I give honor to his son, Jesus, my savior. I give honor to the gift of the Holy Spirit who dwells down on the inside with a mighty burning fire, amen. My help, the Holy Spirit. I give honor this morning to Bishop Joseph White, the founding and presiding bishop of the Church of Living God International. I give honor to the board of directors. I give honor this morning to Elder Walter Jones, my district superintendent out of Bloomington, Illinois, Bloomington Worship Center, holding on to God's unchanging hands. And I give honor this morning to Assistant Pastor Harris, and I give honor to you, all minister saints and friends. And it's a wonderful day in the Lord this morning. And I thank God that he has had grace and mercy on my soul, and grace and mercy on my life, and grace and mercy on the people that I care about the most, amen, because we are here this morning, and I want to encourage you in the word. And my topic today is mind the things of the spirit. Mind the things of the spirit. And I'll start out this morning over in the book of Romans. Over in Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 5. Romans 8 and 5, when you get there, please say amen. Amen. And the Bible says, I'm actually going to start at verse 6, Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, I'm actually going to go back to 5, I apologize. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And Assistant Pastor Harris, we're over in Romans 8 and 5 this morning. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And there are many people that are spiritual. And there are many people that profess to be spiritual. But the question this morning is, what spirit are they referring to? And if I say I have a spiritual advisor, what spirit are they advising me in? And furthermore, what spirit is Romans 8 talking about? It says, again, for, in verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we often hear in the world being spiritual is tied directly to peace. So if you, you having a hard time in your life, you, go, you may go find somebody that's a spiritual advisor and because you're seeking peace and you're seeking a better life. And it said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So it sounds like we have a problem that there's this thing called the carnal mind. In carnal, the definition of carnal is referring to the physical needs and activities. Referring to the physical needs and activities. And sometimes carnal is, is mixed in with sin. People, they teach it or they preach it as if carnal is sin. But carnal is actually referring to the physical needs and activities. And so in verse 8, in verse 7, it said that because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is always focused on the physical needs and activities, or the carnal mind is focused on the needs of this life. And because it is, according to the definition, it's all about the physical needs of this life, it cannot be subject to God because God isn't focused on the physical needs of this life. And again, my topic is minding the things of the spirit. 
And so it said that neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind neither indeed can be. So no matter how hard we try to serve God, if our mind is not focused on the things of God, we can't please God. And it said in verse 8, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So it sounds like God is letting us know that there is a way that our mind has to be when we want to please him. Because it said the carnal mind, the mind that we were just born with, just living our lives, thinking about the job, thinking about the home, thinking about the family, thinking about the Xbox, thinking about the PlayStation, the, the cell phones, all these things, those things can't please God because they're focused on this life, the physical needs and activities of this world. I, I love sports, but my love of sports isn't going to please God. And it said in verse 9, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And I posed the question in the beginning, what spirit is the Bible talking about? Well, it just clarified that this spirit is talking about is the Spirit of God. We know that it is to be the Holy Spirit. This spirit is talking about, in verse 9, is also known as the Spirit of Christ. We also know that that same spirit is the Holy Spirit. So when we think about spiritual advisors and we think about anything concerning the spirit in the Bible, we have to know what spirit is talking about. So there's nothing wrong with having a spiritual advisor. If they're advising you in the Holy Spirit, because this morning talking about minding the things of the spirit, we now know by the time we got to verse nine, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. And so it says here that in verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Talking about the Holy Spirit again. So when, if you remember any of our previous services where the Bible told us that Christ is not actually in us because he sits at the right hand of the Father. So what is the Bible saying here if it says, if Christ be in you? Well, this is where we encourage you at New Life to continue reading. So the Bible says, go on and know the Lord. So if I just stopped at that verse, I may give the impression that Christ is in you. But the next verse says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, if he dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Talking about the Holy Spirit again. He is the one that has to dwell in us. For if he dwells in us, the same spirit that raised up Jesus, because Jesus was risen by the Holy Spirit. He didn't just decide on the third day, it's time to get up. But God commanded the Holy Spirit to raise him up from the dead. And so 11 said, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that he shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So it said also quicken. And we learned last week that quicken means to give life. Quicken means to make alive. So this same Holy Spirit will also quicken you. And it says in 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 12 is saying we don't owe this flesh anything. We owe the flesh nothing. My Bible tells me it calls this body the vile body. And it says we don't owe the flesh anything because it's not the flesh that saves us. It's not the flesh that's going to quicken us. It's not the flesh that brings about the change that we need in this life. And so tying this back into this carnal mind that we talked about in the beginning, the carnal mind minds the physical needs and activities of this body. What do you need today? Over in the Bible, Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. He said, take no thought for what you shall eat. He said, don't be worried about the things that you need for your body because God knows you need those things. And so by the time we get down to verse 12, it says we're not in debt to the flesh because the flesh is doing nothing to help us to get to heaven, which is why it said in the beginning, if we have a carnal mind that's always thinking about this body, always thinking about this life, when was the last time you thought about the spirit? 
the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, I went 20 plus years never thinking about the Holy Spirit. Didn't even know whether there be any Holy Ghost, as it said over in Acts. My mind was never on spiritual things. So by what the Bible said, I was not pleasing God all that time. I was not seeking after righteousness. I was not asking God to change my heart because my mind wasn't on the things of God. I had a carnal mind. It was about having a good job. It was about getting married. It was about having kids. It was about having a nice car. It was about having a nice house. It was about all these things of this life. And the Bible said that stuff doesn't please God. But when we have the mind of the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit dwells within us, we can please God. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you you have to pray. The Holy Spirit will let you know that you have to live holy and acceptable unto Him. So it said, therefore, since the flesh isn't going to result in living in heaven, getting this eternal life, we don't owe this flesh nothing. And that's why in verse 13 it said, if you live after the flesh, or your life, your whole life is just based upon what you can have in this world. If you live with the carnal mind, never thinking about the things of God in the spirit, it said that ye shall die. Not talking about dying in this physical body, we're talking about the second death where you don't inherit eternal life, but you actually inherit eternal death going down to hell. It said, if you live after the flesh as if you owe your life to the things of this world, we owe our life to God every day. But if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if you, through the spirit, the Holy Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If you live and mind the things of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, Mind the things of God by the Holy Spirit. Allow him to renew you in the spirit of your mind, as the Bible says. To change your mind where your car is no longer the most important thing to you. I can tell you that today because one day my car was the most important thing to me. I have given this testimony in private that when I met my wife, it was around Thanksgiving. I had a car accident, just a minor fender bender. Just dented the front and was still able to drive it, but... My heart was broken. I didn't care about her. I didn't care about Thanksgiving. I just wanted my car fixed because my car was my everything. I didn't care about God. Wasn't trying to go to heaven. I wanted my car fixed. So if I would have kept that same mind, the end result would have been I would have died and not inherited the kingdom of God. But it says here, for as many as are led in 14 by the Spirit of God, this Holy Spirit again, they are the sons of God. When we allow the Spirit to come in and lead us, we allow Him to guide us, we become the sons of God. Not just by Him leading us, because Jesus said that the Spirit would be with you, so He'll be with you. Day by day when you travel, at your home, on the job, whatever you're doing, the Spirit will be with you. But Jesus said He'll also be in you. Romans just told us if the Spirit is in you. So if we are led by the Holy Spirit, we are the sons of God. It says in 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It said the spirit of bondage again. That means we had the spirit of bondage before. We didn't know we had the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage is what we were born into, which was sin. The spirit of bondage, according to the Bible. So it said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you don't have the spirit of bondage again to fear. Why don't we have the spirit of bondage again to fear? Because the Holy Spirit comes in and he translates us to a different life a different lifestyle, a different kingdom, a different master. The Bible says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So then we leave that spirit of bondage behind. The Holy Spirit comes in and he frees you. The Bible says, he whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Free from what? Free from the spirit of bondage again to fear. I was afraid before I had the Holy Spirit because I didn't know how my life was going to turn out. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the next month. I didn't know how things were going to be. I always thought things were going to come and overtake me. But when you have the Holy Spirit and you mind the things of the Spirit, the Spirit will tell you that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll tell you that He's able to put angels of protection around you. He'll let you know what His thoughts are concerning you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Spirit will 
encourage you. And it says also in 16 that the, it says for the, he's the spirit of adoption in 15, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. When he adopts us, God becomes our father. It's by the spirit or whereby we're able to call God father. And when God is your father, minding the things of the spirit, when God is your father, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God is your father. And it says, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, even joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Once the spirit adopts you and your mind is no longer just concerned about this life in this life only. Once your hope in Christ is not just in this life only. When your hope becomes, this hope that we're saved by, your hope becomes in having your body change from mortal to immortal, making it to heaven. We become a child of God and we would inherit all these things of God. And this is what it says in 18 and 19. It says that when we become these joint heirs with Christ, when we, we find out that everything that God has can be ours, when we find out that God's on our side, then we no longer have to fear. Verse 18 says, for I reckon. The, Paul, the, the, the writer said, he said, hmm, let me think about this. I looked up the definition of reckon. It says, consider or regard in a specific way to expect a particular thing. Reckon is to consider or regard, to think about. It says to expect a certain thing. So he said, he said for I reckon. He said, now that you've, you've told me, Pastor, now that you told me, Holy Spirit, now that you've told me, Jesus, that the flesh doesn't do any of the stuff for me that I need to have done. The flesh isn't going to be to the salvation of my soul. He said, and then you told me there's a Holy Spirit who can be in me that makes me a child of God. He said, so now that you told me I got a, I got a choice. He said, I can keep falling after this flesh the way I've been doing, trying to get ahead in life, not worried about God, not allowing the spirit to change my heart, not even wanting to be born again, because unless you're born again, you can't enter the kingdom, not worried about that. He said, I can keep on serving this flesh, doing my own will, skipping church, everything else, not worried about God, because that's what I was doing, talking about me this morning. Could keep going down that path. He said, or now that you shed some light, on this God that you're talking about and this Holy Spirit, he said, I reckon, let me think about this. He said, so I reckon considering what you said, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He said, I reckon since what you're saying this morning, that there is a God, that he has a son named Jesus, that there is a Holy Spirit, and God and Jesus desires me to have him so I can become a child of God, that I can be his. He said, I reckon all this other stuff ain't even worthy to be compared. He said, I reckon having my heart broke, going through things in this life, going through all these trials and tribulations, he said, I reckon it's not worth to be compared to the glory of having my body changed, the glory of taking on immortality, the glory of living forever with God, the glory of the streets of gold, the glory of the white robe, the glory of no more sadness, the glory of no more tears, the glory of no more pain, the glory of no more death. He said, I reckon when I think about this, nothing on this life in this world concerning this flesh is worthy to be compared. He said, that's why I got to let it all go. He said, that's why over in Philippians, which we're not going to go through for time, he said that everything I work for, I count it as loss that I may win Christ. My education, counted as loss, so that I win Christ. My job, counted as loss, will let it go if I have to, that I may win Christ. It said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That the same power, the Holy Ghost, that raised Jesus from the dead, I'll let go of this world. I'll let go of this flesh. Put stuff aside that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That the Holy Spirit will come in and revive me in this life. That he'll revive me in the life to come. I want to encourage you this morning. Nothing that you're going through is worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in you. And I often thought that that only meant through the bad things that you're going through. None of the good things you're going through is worthy to be compared. No matter how pretty the house, 
is not more beautiful than a mansion in heaven of transparent gold. No matter how much money you have, you can have the best life in the world. It cannot be compared to the glory of having an immortal body as we stand. We have to mind the things of the Spirit. Because when you mind the things of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. He'll let you know what's important to God. As Assistant Pastor Harris said in Christian Education, the Holy Spirit lets you know what's important to God. When we have a carnal mind and we mind the physical needs of this body, we just know what's important to us. My car was important to me. God was worried about my soul. Your soul is important this morning. God wants to save you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're able to receive him this morning so that you can mind the things of the spirit. Let's look unto the Father.